Hey there, Facebook. It is Vanessa here again, your speaker, trainer, and head coach from Live Love Give. And today I have got a message coming to you, which is going to ask you a kind of question that you kind of want to get a bit brutally honest with yourself about. And for the purposes of growing and actually improving and absolutely empowering yourself in the area of relationships, instead of you know, not taking any responsibility and disempowering yourself and thinking that, you know, the challenges that you consistently experience in your life, um, you know, you can get caught up in this mindset of thinking that it's everybody else. But at some stage, you know, we have to kind of take a step back and recognize and realize that potentially we're the common denominator in all of those relationships that we have with different people um, at different times throughout our lives, but we're experiencing the same problem and what's coming with us, um, every single one of those relationships, it's us, you know? And so we need to really look at that and not for the purposes of judging ourselves or beating down on ourselves, but actually from for the purposes of, like I said, empowering ourselves by taking responsibility and learning something about ourselves, maybe being more aware of a blind spot that we might have. And I've been thinking about this topic a little bit um, recently and, um, and I was just kind of writing about it. I was like, I was asking myself, you know, what are those common problems that I've experienced in relationships and you know that I'm the common denominator of and what are they like what keep what do I keep hearing from different people whether they're family members or friendships or intimate partners or whoever they are you know what is that common theme that I've consistently had throughout each and every one of them um, for the purposes of creating something better and better in my relationships moving forward. Because if we learn along the way, our relationships are always going to get better and better and better because we're becoming more self-aware about who we really are, about what we value, about what we want, what we don't want. We're growing in courage to be able to communicate about that and understand others better because we're understanding ourselves better. And this is just one way in which we can definitely get some insight into our blind spots and from that place work out what we want to do with it. And I'm going to share with you a couple of examples um, in my own life that I've sort of come up with. And I've got two that are really just been common theme um, and always people have had challenges with me um, throughout my life. Um, and the number one one is, um, what is it? I wrote it down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm bad at this. So not staying in touch um, in enough connection with people when I'm not interacting with them, you know, in the physical. So what that kind of looks like is I've always kind of been somebody who, um, if you're in front of me, you are the most important, special, valuable person. I'm fascinated in you and I want to learn all about you, um, which is awesome when you're with me. But outside of that, I am, anybody who knows me, knows how shockingly terrible I am at getting back to emails, particularly if they're really long, um, or text messages or just messages in general that are like big novels. You guys know who have had some sort of friendship with me. You already know that I'm really hopeless at getting back to that. And I'd much rather um, see you in person and just like get to learn everything that's been going on and explain everything that's been going on and um, or at least pick up the phone and ideally a video call, um, you know, for me to be able to really connect with you. But if it's just going to be this back and forth, like long emails back and forth and I never feel like we're really getting anywhere. I mean, I don't know anybody else who thinks like this. I think I might be a bit weird, but you guys let me know if you have the same experience. I'm just really shocking at getting back to long emails, messages, correspondence that um, a lot of people I've heard from who I've been in relationship with, they don't like that I'm like that. And in fact, it becomes a challenge and a problem in my connections and my relationships. And so probably for the last 10 or so years, I have really beaten myself up on this aspect. 
I've been complaining about, oh, why can't I just be motivated to, you know, write back to people and get back to people and, you know, connect with them and all of this sort of stuff. And it's only been literally very, very, very recently that I've kind of just gone, you know what? It's If it hasn't happened for this long and I continue to behave in that same way, let's look at that behavior. Is that something, because I've, I've known about it, I've been conscious of it, and I've, I've had this conscious thought and desire to change it for a long time, like I'm at least 10 years, and so why hasn't it changed? And I had to just look honestly about that because it's something I'd, I'd feel terrible about, you know? I'd, I'd shoot all over myself in the words of Tony Robbins, and I would always be like, oh, I need to change this. But the fact of the matter is I haven't changed it. And so what's that about? So that's what we really need to look at. What are those things that you say you want to change, but you're actually not changing? And instead of, you know, it's that thing that's on the to-do list every single day you expect yourself to do. But if you're not getting into action around it, that's really what I want to talk to you guys about today. About if you want to change it, if you really want to change it, I'll tell you a strategy of how to do that. But what my experience is right now with this particular challenge that is consistent in my relationships is I've actually discovered that I'm going to stop beating up on myself for that. And instead, I'm going to have clarity over what's important to me. That's That to me is not depth of connection. I, I know that it is for other people, but what if I can communicate and understand myself well enough to be able to communicate and come up with more meaningful solutions that I don't need motivation around that I'm actually truly inspired to engage with you know um, so that's what I think we all need to understand ourselves what matters most what we value what's important to us what inspires us not what we have to be motivated by I, a lot of the times through pain in our relationships because somebody else has an expectation and we want to keep them happy but you know it's only short-lived you're relying on willpower when it's not actually really that meaningful to you and instead of trying to make others happy in their values how about we find out what's really valuable to us and how we can use what's valuable to us and match it with what's value to, valuable to them and find a way that supports us both, you know? And so friends in my life know that I'm not going to get, I'm going to, it's going to take me at least a week probably to get back to any emails um, and, you know, a, a long emails I'm talking about. If they're short and sharp, that's how to communicate with me until we can get either in person or we can get on a video call. That's that's me, you know? And that's what I'm really inspired by. That's what motivates me. I can get into action and do the things that I don't necessarily enjoy doing if I know it's important to somebody else, but it's not gonna be long lived. That person's gonna have to remind me to do it because it's not really in my values. And so that's just a, a small example as to, you know, these these challenges that we can run into in our relationship. We might want to change the behavior, which I'm going to share with you right now in just after I speak for this 30 seconds about recapping. But, you know, we can change the behavior if we need to and if we really desire to. But we also need to stop shooting all over ourselves and recognize how we operate if we're self-aware and we can get clear on why we do the things that we do what's important to us, what inspires us, how we see depth of connection, um, you know, creating that in our relationships um, or whatever the challenge is around and then communicate that and own it, you know, and find a win-win between the two of you by understanding what is most meaningful to each of you. Finding a middle ground, but not ever compromising at the expense of each other's values because it's only going to be short-lived. Instead, get innovative and find something that's going to support you both in that regard. And then secondly, if you really want to change a behavior, you really need to just remember the simplicity of we only ever align with our actions or our inactions in the, in the pathway of what we believe will give us more advantages rather than disadvantages. So we're always going to be doing things that we perceive will give us more advantages over disadvantages. And we're always going to stop ourselves from doing things that we see give us more disadvantages than advantages. 
So if we know that, and it's very simple to understand that, but if we know that and we know that that's what drives our human behavior, then if you really want to change that behavior, like I've mentioned to you guys, I think last week in one of my Facebook lives, then you really need to stack up the advantages of changing your behavior and make them outweigh the disadvantages that you're currently seeing. And you might need to get clear on what those disadvantages are. Bring them up to the surface. Understand what's really driving your behavior. It's always that weighing up, that perception of what's going to give you more advantages over disadvantages. And if we can get clear on that, and if we really desire to make the change, instead of communicating and finding a middle ground, then you have to do the work to outweigh the disadvantages with advantages for changing that behavior. So really, really hope that um, me sharing this with you guys is helpful. I did have a couple of other examples that I was going to share with you, um, uh, but I don't think it's really important. I think that what I've shared with you will give you um, the, you know, the kind of perspective that you need to try and understand this within yourself. But I'd really encourage you to think about what, are, what is the common theme of the challenges that you've experienced in your relationships? That was just one of mine. I don't want to be here all day because there's, there's always a few. Um, but definitely identify what that common theme is, that you're the common denominator going from relationship to relationship and people are picking up this blind spot for you. And then decide how you're going to use this for higher levels of self-awareness and decide whether you're going to communicate openly about what you value and what inspires you um, and, you know, and come up with a middle ground for people you want to create extraordinary quality of relationship with. Or if it's something that you really think, I want to change this, I want to be motivated and inspired to change this behavior, then you've got to do the work at you know, up leveling the advantages over disadvantages in changing that behavior. As soon as you get there, you'll, you'll be inspired to change. Um, that's just how we kind of work. So really want to check in with you guys and see who's been able to join me and um, definitely drop any questions or comments or feedback for me. I'd love to hear, hear from you. And um, definitely, guys, I've put a link for the Dr. John D. Martini interview that I did um, really talking into the evolution of humanity and, and consciousness from religion to cosmology. It is mind-blowing stuff. And it was such um, a ball. I had such a ball, um, you know, interviewing Dr. John D. Martini again. And um, I'd love for you guys to check out that interview and let me know your thoughts on it. Um, start a conversation and definitely join us in the Limitless Potential in our Circle Facebook community if you haven't already. What are you waiting for? Come on over and join us. Both links are up above and let me check in and I've got... Uh, I've got Ram and Elliot and Jamie and Jason and Kim and Melissa and Brian. Um, thank you. And uh, Elliot and Alexandria, my spirit sister. I love it. And Julie and, uh, oh, Mabambadilio. Mabambadilio. I didn't quite catch your name, but thank you so much for being here. And Chris is here and Kim, absolutely. Take ownership. Take responsibility. Life is not lived until we feel empowered in all areas of life. Today we're talking about relationship, empowering yourself there by not, you know, expecting people to, to show up in a way that you want them to. And instead, if you've got some challenges, take ownership. What's your role being played? What can you take ownership of so that you can empower yourself? You know, instead of feeling like you're at the whim of somebody else changing and doing something different to who they actually are when we know that that's just kind of insanity. And so absolutely, Kim and Laura's here and Judy and Jason and Ismail and Gerardo. Greetings to you and Nicole and Safon. Loving that this is resonating. Alexandria, it's all in our values. Absolutely. And you guys are always hearing me drum home this whole concept around values. And I really do believe that, um, you know, until we are clear on what each of us, in particular, our highest value, um, you know, that is such a good pathway into creating extraordinary quality relationships. Because until we can communicate in each other's values, 
um, we're not really creating a loving, caring, connected relationship. We're really just focused on ourselves and um, trying to get our values and needs met as opposed to getting your values and needs met through knowing what other people's values and needs are and you know, creating a win-win out of that. You know, And so I think that definitely you're spot on there, Alexandria. It's all in our values. And Sam's here, hello to you. And Satish, nice to see you inspiring after a long gap. Great, well it's awesome to have you back, Satish. Thank you for joining. And uh, Jolene and Haru, shine on, shine on to you as well. And Jason's here and Shane and Chris and Sam, always gratitude to catch up with your wisdom and amazing transmission. Thank you so much, Sam. As always, you guys know how much I love getting to connect with you guys. So thank you so much for joining me. And um, as always, I'm sending you guys all of my love, light, blessings, gratitude, energy, enthusiasm, everything extraordinary coming to you, to wherever you are in the world today. I hope it's beautiful and amazing and extraordinary. And I hope that you're going to use today's message to build some self-awareness, get honest, take ownership, get take the responsibility, look at what that common theme in all your relationship challenges is, and then own it, you know, either own it as a value um, that you know this, hey, this is what is inspiring to me and this is what I need to communicate. Or secondly, if you want to change it, do the work to just weigh up, you know, you know, put more advantages, uncover what are like right 50, at least 50 advantages for changing that behavior and make sure that they far outweigh the disadvantages that you've got associated with that behavior. If you do that, if you do the work once, make the shift in your mind, you will be inspired to make that shift and that change. So that is it, Elias. Um, thank you so much for being here um, to all of you guys. And um, I'm sending you all of my love and I cannot wait to see you guys tomorrow.